Welcome to the tutorial, Additional Morphing Hints. So the first thing I'd like to show you is how to convert morphing in-betweens, which are these things right here, into actual drawings. So you just have to select a portion of the morph sequence between the source drawing and the destination drawing, and then right-click, and from the menu, select Morphing, Convert Morphing to Drawings. The Convert Morph dialog box opens um, and asks you to enter a base name for the drawings. So I'm going to select CL for clouds and say OK. And now as you can see, each of the morphed sequence has become its own individual drawing that you can manipulate. And then if we go to the X sheet view for a few minutes, um, you can see that the entire column, so the cloud column, which represents the cloud layer, um, has all of its drawings named CL and then a numerical value. So what that looked like before if we go back is it really just had the arrows to indicate that it was a morphing sequence. And now we can see that each drawing has its own individual identity. So if you make a change on um, CL1 it will not affect CL16, etc. And this can be really useful when you want to change the timing of your drawing. For example, if you want to convert these all into double frames. The only thing that you have to be aware of is once you've done this, you really can't go back. I mean, I can go back once. I can use Command or Control Z to go back to this morphing sequence. But what I mean is once you've closed the software for the day, um, you can't bring this morphing sequence back. Uh, you'd have to do it all over again using the first and last drawings um, from those broken down in-betweens. So the next thing I'd like to show you is how to morph holes and transparencies. So let's create a new drawing layer. And let's rename it Donut. Actually, I'm going to disable the cloud from view. And I'm just going to really quickly draw a crude looking donut. Okay, so this is our first donut. This is our donut turning in perspective. Um, let me see if I can at least make them. About the same height. There we go. And I'm just going to fill them in quickly as well. So there's a fill. So when you morph something like this, I'll show you what happens. So there we go. The center that was transparent before now is filled with the yellow fill. Um, and that's because morphing doesn't handle transparencies or holes very well. So there is a trick that you can do to salvage your hole so that it appears both in your source drawing, your destination drawing, and in the morphed sequence in between. So let's delete this morphing sequence. And what we can do is we can add a swatch to our color palette that's transparent. So I'm going to name this transparent. Transparent fill. And then I'm actually going to bring down the alpha so that it's zero so it is in fact transparent. And then I'm going to use that transparent fill to fill in the center of both the source drawing and the destination drawing. And on top of that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to flatten both drawings as well. There we go. If you flatten the source, and you don't need to flatten the destination, I guess. And so now we see that our donut morphs, so it looks like it's sort of turning 360 degrees or at least, you know, 90 degrees. So you can see it in profile. So that's it for the tutorial, Additional Morphing Hints, and it's also the last video in the Morphing Video Tutorial series.